Hey guys, Paul from Net Audio here, and what we're going to talk to about today is acoustics of the vehicle. So, have you ever put a sound system in, put your subwoofers in your car, and you're like, man, I got two 12s and a thousand watts, this is going to rattle my trunk, and then you put it in there and you're just kind of like, Mwah. you know, it's nothing like you expected. You have this expectation in your head, perceived reality of what this should be doing because you heard it in a buddy's car, you heard it on the sales floor at a shop, and then you get it in your car and it's not doing what you expected. A lot of times it can be just the acoustics of the vehicle. It can be how the subwoofers and everything are placed inside the vehicle. In this, this video that we're doing, it's from us talking about our Dodge Chargers and Challengers and our enclosures, what we experience with them but these rules still apply to any vehicle, not just cars with big trunks, they apply to any vehicle. So we're trying to keep all this information pretty watered down. I'm not trying to get real techy about it. We're not talking about wavelength and all this other stuff so that your average DIYer has some information to go home, experiment with, play with, test it, and say, this worked better for me. I don't care what all the myths and all the experts on the internet and all the forums say, there is no one set perfect answer per vehicle, per application. Everybody's equipment is different. Everybody's needs are different. Test and experiment. That is the only way you're going to find out what's going to actually work best for you. So hopefully this gets some questions answered for you. But like I said, go home, play with it, see what you can come up with. So check this all out. One thing that I wanted to talk about on these cars is the acoustics. This is a topic I have with everybody that comes in they're wanting to do to plan out a sound system on their charger. These cars are just kind of difficult because of the physical dimensions and physical shape of these cars. Let's backtrack, um, you know, 15 years or so. The Charger platform came out, the Chrysler 300 came out first in 2005, then the Charger came out in 06, and then the Challenger I think came out in 2009. They're all the same trunk, and the Charger and Chrysler 300 are a long body, big body sedan with a very deep trunk, which is the reason why we can put an enclosure like this in there so easily. What we ran into is we're putting sound systems in these chargers and we are ex have an expectation of how loud they should be based off of other vehicles that we've done using the same equipment, same enclosures. And these cars were always very hard. We just weren't getting the performance out of them that we were expecting to get. You were going on to the rear package tray. Up here is the location for the factory subwoofer. and We're cutting out the sound deadener. We were cutting the, the padded and uh, padding that went below and covered up the rear package tray. You know, we were doing all sorts of stuff trying to get that base into the car. And it just didn't make sense because it's not a BMW. It wasn't a Mercedes where it had a real heavy seat. It wasn't a BMW where it was a trunk sealed off from the cabin. You know, the seat folded down. It wasn't a fancy seat. It just had cloth on the back of it. We just didn't understand it. And finally, one day, I was in one of my professional Facebook groups and another shop, someone that I already knew and respected, came on in the group and it was, he was frustrated. He's like, what the hell is up with these chargers? How come I can't get any base out of them? I was like, oh, heck yeah. Like somebody else is sitting here talking about it. So I go to the comments, dude, everybody was sitting here just griping about what is up with these cars. I thought it was only me. I can't believe it's not just me. There's a few different solutions that people came up with. I'm not a big fan of doing bandpass enclosures just cause that's a whole nother topic. Wow. I prefer to do the rear fire enclosures. Some guys were doing forward fire, which has its point. One very smart guy that if you're in the industry, you absolutely know who he is. And he came on and he said, it's the acoustics of the vehicle. It's the length of the car. If you're a seasoned professional and you are a, someone who's proficient at building enclosures, then you know what you do, you know, if someone comes in, hey, I just want to do a couple of small tens. Okay, cool. Well, we'll build you an enclosure and we're going to keep as much trunk space as we can. So make the box as tall and as wide as we can, which means it's not very deep. So we're just going to shove it right up against that seat back and give you all this trunk space. What that does when you have a deep trunk is it breaks this vehicle up where you're getting that subwoofer further and further and further back towards the middle of the car. And what you end up doing is you're creating a lot of cancellation. Acoustically, you're creating these cancellations inside the vehicle. If you have the system playing and beating and you, you're listening to it and you know the amplifier is tuned correctly and you're just like, man, it's just not that loud, then that's when you're running into acoustics. In, in any car, when you're in that application and you're experimenting, what you can do is you can pop the trunk. And if it gets louder, then poof. 
it's the sound waves sitting there bouncing around in the car and they're canceling each other out. We ran into this recently with a Mustang. A Mustang has got its own whole nother topic, but exact same situation. The subwoofer placement inside the trunk makes a huge difference on the performance of that. Let's imagine this is our trunk and then we've got another like 12 or 14 inches or so going that way. If you build a box and it's only this big, then we've got a whole lot of space in front of us, but that's putting the subwoofer further towards you know, the driver position itself instead of further away. So when this subwoofer is playing, those sound waves are so long that the bass is rolling off and it goes off in different directions. It doesn't just fire that way and then bounce off the hatch. You know, we've all seen those diagrams that's thinking two dimensionally. It's sound, it is three dimensional. It is a sphere of sound coming off of this speaker. It's just the bulk of that energy, yes, is firing towards your license plate. And when it does that, it hits, you know, all that bulk energy, it's hitting the trunk lid and it is doing some sort of reflection and rolling back to you. It's also rolling off of here. What's happening is all that sound is meeting up closer towards the driver's position and it's canceling out. Instead of the sound waves amplifying and adding to each other, they're canceling each other out. With our enclosures, if you're doing the large XL and the jumbos, by far, they're going to be the easier to get consistent performance out of because the enclosure is deeper and it's getting that enclosure closer to the trunk lid and further away from you. So this increases that loading effect you get here and it increases the distance from the woofer and from you. And that's helping fight that cancellation. If you're after just a little bit of bass, nothing fancy, absolutely do the small and the, and the medium enclosures. But if you wanna get the most out of them, a couple different ways you can do it. This is exactly where uh, signal processors and time delay this is what that time delay is for, is to help with that sound wave and try to get it to match up the best with you in the vehicle. Time delay is not to fix the speaker. DSPs are not to fix the speakers. They're to account for the vehicle. In that case, DSP would work great for lining this stuff up. If you don't have a DSP, amplifiers, you see the, the dial on it or a switch that says zero to 180. If it's a dial, great. If it's a switch, switch between the two of them and it's going to help what this is for this is your phase adjustment and all it's doing if it's a zero to 180 it is literally going positive and negative and flipping them and it's doing negative positive so it's either the speaker's pushing out or it's pushing in as it plays both of them are going to sound the same from the speaker directly but the way it reacts in the car is going to have a difference experiment with it one way will be better if you have the dial beautiful so what you do is you get your buddy to crawl into the trunk and you sit in the driver's seat and you play your music as your buddy slowly adjusts that dial until they get that dialed in with how it sounds best to you in the driver's seat. That is going to help you eliminate or really, really reduce that cancellation effect. On a Mustang that we did, we did the subs firing forward just for a number of many reasons, but we were using a DSP, we knew we could account for it. Using our audio control RTA and micing the car, playing a test tone, we were able to get over a six decibel gain of us correcting that time delay with the driver's seat. It's not something to joke about. It is something you can get some serious performance gains from. All right, guys, hopefully that helped answer some questions. So like I said, take this home, play with it, see what works best for you. If you have questions, you're like, man, I've got this equipment and it's just not working, hit us up in the comments. I I'm always free for answering some questions and helping to expand knowledge in our industry. That's the whole point of what we're doing with our videos. Yes, it's to hopefully make some sales, but I'm trying to educate. That is really what we're trying to do because like I said at the beginning, there is a lot of myth that is out on the internet and we're trying to dispel some of those rumors and myths a little piece at a time. And I'm sure that I'm gonna catch some flack in the comments from some experts. That's just the internet. I know that's just part of it. But there's a difference between someone who's hooked up a couple of systems in their life versus someone that hooks up systems for 20 plus years professionally. You know, we're not doing, you know, once a year, we're doing, you know, a few a day. So it's a little different around here. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. And like I said, be, play with your stuff and see what you can do. If you have questions on equipment and what's going to do what you want it to, or your vehicle's doing this and you're wanting to know how to fix this, then ask us. You can, like I said, hit us in the comments. You can shoot us a message on Facebook. You can call the shop at 940-767-1800. Feel free to shoot me an email, paul at netaudio.com, and I'll be glad to help you out with anything I can. Thanks, guys.